Well, good morning, folks, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. If this is your first time tuning in, I am Old Car Auto Guy, and this channel revolves around the operations of my used car lot, not to mention some car projects that we have going on and maybe a little shenanigan or two. So right now, all I want to do is get you introduced to a little bit of what's going on around the shop here right now. So stay tuned. So as you can see in the shop here right now, yesterday it got cleaned out. Basically that means we're pretty much caught up. And again, if you are new to the channel, this is my father's 1936 Dodge sedan. It has been a labor of love for my dad for the last three years where he's finally got it to a point where he can actually drive it. Still working on getting some new rear end gears in it. Still working on a flooding carburetor issue. Other than that, he does like to drive it. I've driven it, I love to drive it. And until we get those new gears in there, I don't think she's quite the rocket ship yet. And speaking of new rear end gears, the shop truck, as I've mentioned in previous videos, we've had some trouble getting the right set of bearings for this truck. Why? Well, this, this type of truck would generally only have a nine inch rear end. This particular one has what's called a 10 and a quarter, I believe. Uh, kind of rare on a regular half ton truck, but this does have the towing package right from the factory. So my guess is, is it's got some pretty high uh, gear ratio, like a probably like a 373 or something like that, made for towing. Uh, it does have the five liter engine in it as well with the automatic transmission. So uh, today is the day that we bring this in the shop and we hopefully finish up that job, hopefully because I need the truck this weekend to haul some fridges around. What we're trying to do is get the bearings out of the end here. Shoving along prior bar in through one side on extension. Coming out this side. It's already starting to ooze. Hey. You're, spit, you're spitting teeth out here. The bearings are coming apart. <laughs> good shirt to work. This 2006 Ford Focus is something we took on trade last week for the 2015 uh, Chevy Cruze and it's a really nice car. It does have a few rust issues on the rocker panels but it's a 2006 with only 140 something thousand kilometers. Really really good car. And there sits Project Bubbles which is soon to be Project Blowing Bubbles. Why do I say soon to be? Well, check this out. This is what we call tannerite. When mixed with the little pouch that's inside there, it becomes kind of volatile. This is one pound. That is 12 pounds. 12 pounds of tannerite is what we're going to use to blow up Project Bubbles. Therefore, project blowing bubbles. The reason why we're doing this is because I bought that car back in October of last year. It had some issues, lots of rust issues, a few mechanical issues. Some of the mechanical issues we got fixed up so I could drive it for the winter. We did manage to squeeze some 31 inch tires on that with a lift kit and wheel spacers. But now that the inspection has gone past and will not pass inspection again, the cost of repair is far outvaluing weighing the cost of the value of the vehicle. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little fun with it. I've had my share of fun with it already, and now it's time for the demise of bubbles. So that video will come, but first you guys have to do your part. You have to help get me to 2,000 subscribers. I haven't blown it up yet. Obviously you can see it sitting right there, but coming up within the next week or so, we're gonna do it. The trick is I'm not releasing that video until you guys get me to 2,000 subscribers. So let's do it. There he is. 
Let's make it happen. Let's get to 2,000 subscribers so that you guys can see bubbles blowing up. Now, as we walk through the lot, one of the things that uh, you may or may not have noticed is that we have rearranged the lot a little bit. We took all of our SUVs, we've lined them up on each side of the parking lot and over here. And in the middle is where we've put all of our cars. So as you can see, we've got quite a selection of them here right now. We are currently sitting on our biggest inventory in probably two and a half years. As you know, last year, 2018, things were pretty quiet around the lot here. We didn't have a huge inventory. We basically sat on probably 15, 18 cars. We're now sitting on probably 31 or 32. Uh, we've been as high as 40 in the past, but we do have a few vehicles out back that uh, aren't ready yet. Some of them need a little extra work. Some of them are just junk. They're gonna be hauled off to the, uh, to the scrap man. And uh, anyways, one of the things I did wanna to talk to you today about was uh, the little issue that I had with YouTube and copyright claims. Well, the issue wasn't actually with YouTube. It just happens to be where the claims came through at. Again, as you guys know, I recently became monetized on YouTube. I have reached a revenue peak so far of about $2.65. I'm so excited about that. And that $2.65 will definitely be going back into the channel. Anyways, so as soon as my videos became monetized, a little green dollar sign shows up beside each of my videos, and I will show you in this picture here. What happens after that is any of those videos that might be demonetized for whatever reason will be issued a red circle with a line through it. So when I was going down through my videos, I realized that I had a few videos that had some copyright claims, not strikes, claims. So claims are okay to the point where you're you're not in trouble, it's just that any money made off those videos will go to the claimant. In this case, it was Epidemic Sound. So Epidemic Sound is where I get a lot of my music for my channels. And what I had done was I paid for their uh, subscription, which was $15 Canadian per month, and I downloaded several songs. I probably got quite a selection of them. You guys hear them in every video. For after about three months, I just canceled my subscription. I felt, you know, I have all the songs that I need. I got a pretty good library there for now. And if I ever need any more, I will go back and I will download some more uh, by paying their subscription fee. Well, what happened was between the time I canceled my subscription and the time that I resubscribed, I had received 14 copyright claims. So in some cases, it's no big deal, but when you're monetized, it means that you can't make money off of those videos. Any money made goes to Epidemic Sound. So what, the reason why they put those claims on there was because they wanted their revenue from me as well on my $15 a month. It was kind of a catch-22. If I didn't pay them, I wasn't making money on those videos. If I did pay them, I was paying them, uh, you know, and the money I was making on those videos or potentially to be made on those videos uh, was gonna be going towards that payment anyway. So I reinitialized my subscription. I then basically questioned YouTube on those claims. I wrote a little story that said exactly what I just told you. Now that I am in full good standing with Epidemic Sound, I now have those rights again. And could you please kindly remove the copyright claim? So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll note that I did put those claims through. And as of right now, and as of right now, those claims have been released. So I am no longer under any claims. That means I can now make money on those 14 videos that had copyright music claims on them. So that is the good news. The bad news is, is that I'm still stuck paying Epidemic Sound 15 bucks a month for those videos just to keep those claims off. And I understand that there are ways around that and I am looking into that as we sit. Guys, that is gonna do it for this video. I know it's a little bit of a ramble, but it gave you a little bit of a lot update as well as uh, some of the goings on with the uh, copyright claims that you guys saw on my Instagram. This video, as always, is sponsored, yes it is, by Sussex Beard Oil. They sponsor this beard. If you are a bearded man, you can go there and get yourself some beard oil, some balms, some uh, combs, brushes, all sorts of things. If you're not bearded, they have products for you too. And it's a uh, shave gel called If You Must. Uh, if you're tattooed and you are recently tattooed, they have a cream uh, for new ink. You can get that stuff there as well. So it's not just for bearded guys. Go out and check out sussexbeard.com. 
beardcom and if you are buying some beard products like beard oil every time you buy a regular size you will get a travel size absolutely free by using the promo code glovebox guys license plates i am so close to finishing up this project and getting that wall art hung on the wall i do need a few license plates i received a few more since that last video that i have done and i will update you on those as well so if you have some spare license plates that you want to send me my addresses are canadian and american are in the description box down below i'd appreciate it if you could send those to me guys stay focused on the windshield not the rearview mirror i love you god bless let's do it again in the next video so put your hand in